Ah, the carnival. A fancy public affair with endless food and frivolous fun. A carefree playground with rowdy rides and good-natured games. Pleasant people parading in the midway without a care in the world. But on April 9th and 10th, Pro Wrestling Union invaded the Union County Fair. And all that unity transformed into chaos. The happy atmosphere of kitty corn dogs and cotton candy degraded into Carnival Carnage. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to night two of Carnival Carnage presented by Pro Wrestling Union right here at the Union County Fairgrounds. I'm Cole McAbee, and joining me for commentary again is the one and only Michael Smallwood. Michael, welcome back to Carnival Carnage. Night one was incredible. Two championship matches, a major challenge for the culminate in the match tonight, Cole. Night one was absolutely amazing and I'm super excited to be back for night two I can't wait to see what we've got in store for this show well we're kicking it off big right here with a big six-man tag team matchup right now in the ring you have the former pro wrestling union tag team champion Aiden Cross partnering with his brother Christian Cross the Cross brothers and their tag team partner for tonight's event is going to be the pro wrestling union heavyweight champion himself the outlaw Randy Wayne. Randy Wayne coming off of a admittedly controversial victory at last night's uh, during last night's main event to Carnival Carnage, where he beat Lodi for the championship in, let's say, uh, dishonorable fashion. Shall we, Cole? We can definitely but, say that indeed. But there yeah, he is. But you know what? It's it, he's oh he's, he's gonna be out here. He's gonna continue to throw his weight around because he is still the reigning and defending pro wrestling union heavyweight champion. Coming up next, we got their opponents. One man that currently a champion here for pro wrestling union himself, and another one, the number one contenders for the vacant pro wrestling union tag team champions. One of my favorite tag teams, and perhaps the best tag team in the industry today, Matt Sigmund and Elliot Russell, the Heat Seekers, are coming to the ring. The Heat Seekers are incredible in the ring. They have been uh, incredibly exciting here in Pro Wrestling Union. We've seen them compete in recent weeks. And you know, it's very interesting. They are the number one contenders to our vacant championships. I wonder how long it's going to take for that number one contender says to turn into PWU Tag Team Champions status. Well, not too long from now, there's another show that's going to be coming up from Heroes to Legends Wrestling, Wrestling with Life's Challenges, that's going to be in Silva, North Carolina. The Heat Seekers are going to take on a mystery tag team to crown those tag team champions. But right now, speaking of champions, out coming out next is the current Trans South heavyweight champion, the A game, Austin Jordan. Michael, Frank. I told you, we are doing it big to kick off night two. What an incredible opening match. This is going to be a fresh off an exciting opening match last night. Austin, the A game is here to defend, like to join the Heat Seeks in the six man tag team match. He just defended the championship uh, against Landon Hale in a barn burner of an opener. I, this I mean, this is an embarrassment of riches in the ring right now. Absolutely. 
and we talk about the Heat Seekers and their accomplishments, let's not forget these guys are the four-time former NWA World Tag Team Champions, and they are currently holding championships for such promotions such as PWX, Mid-Atlantic Championship Wrestling, various others. Too many to count. I'm going to be honest with you. Every time that they get on a plane, they have to take at least three luggage with them each because two of those bags are full of championship food. <laughs> well, soon they are hoping to add another set to uh, their accolades. They're hoping to add the PWU Tag Team Championships. But you know what? So are the Cross Brothers. So are y 2 I mean, there, there are a lot of tag teams in Pro Wrestling Union that are vying for those championships. The Heat Seekers are in the lead, perhaps, but they've got an army running behind them. We got a good shot there of Aiden Cross's uh, derriere there. And we want to go ahead and give a quick shout out uh, to one of our new members of our team. Uh, we're proud to announce that we have Blue Horse Media. They are the official uh, producers of video content for Pro Wrestling Union. And if you want to have them doing any events for you anytime soon, check out their uh, Facebook site. It's Blue Horse Media. Right now, now you got the heavyweight champion, the outlaw Randy Wayne, against Sigmund. But wait a minute. The outlaw just tagged in Aiden Cross. Yes, he did. You know, it, Cole, I, I, honestly, I don't blame him. He just had a hard-fought match at Explodio last night. He just defended the championship, and now he's out here starting this show less than 24 hours later. I, I, I might tag in one of the Cross Brothers myself. Right now, Aiden Cross, he's, he's definitely the... How can I say this? He's definitely the wild card amongst the two brothers. You know, Christian, we've seen him before, you know, as the pirate, but he has since given that up uh, to take a little bit more of a uh, direct approach to professional wrestling, going back and tagging with his brother, Aiden. Uh, but Aiden's definitely that wild card, and um, right now you got the two teams, and you have Sigmund tagged in Elliot. And Elliot is such a huge individual. I mean, this is a man that's like 6'4", 6 6'5", 6 you know, 260 pounds. And right now, teaming with Austin Jordan, and they're doing a good thing here, uh, just keeping fresh men in the ring at all times here, uh, staying on top of Aiden Frost in the six-man tag team match. Despite Elliot's size, I mean, that team, you've got three of the fastest Three of the most, uh, three, three of the fastest superstars, some of the best strikers. I mean, this team, the Heat Seekers and uh, the A game, they're gonna hit often, they're gonna hit quick, and they're gonna hit powerful. It, 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 it's making for a very, very, very dynamic trio. Absolutely. Sigmund is asking the fans, Do you want me to break the arm? And you can tell Adam Cross is not a fan of that. Headbutt to the shoulder. Look at that. And I tell you what, I, I do. I really enjoy watching the Heat Seekers in the ring. Look at that. Some fancy maneuvering by Sigmund there. He's perhaps one of the best technical wrestlers in the Southeast. You know, he's got that top wrist lock just right in there on Aiden Cross. Aiden tries to shove him off. Oh, a huge tackle. And right on top of the man, only a one count there. But Sigmund just stays right on top of the man. Now he's tagging in Austin Jordan, the A-game. And they're still working on that arm on Aiden Cross. It's a sound strategy from this trio. This is incredible tag team wrestling. I mean, frequent tags, focusing on one pot, isolating the ring, cutting the ring off. It, Wait a minute. It, it, oh! And Aiden was able to tag in his brother Christian. But Austin Jordan answered back with that uh, arm drag there. And now you got the big man in. A double hip toss. And that's something else to remember, that these guys are working very well together. And Austin Jordan and the Heat Seekers have never really worked together before. But they're being a real cohesive unit here. Oh, and a huge headbutt from the big Austin, man, Elliot Sigmund. Austin Jordan, a natural fit tagging with the Heat Seekers here, which, you know, we saw at the beginning of this match. Randy Wayne not really wanting anything to do with the Cross Brothers in the, in the opening of this match. Oh, oh, he may, he may be tagged now, but still cut off. Look at this tag team wrestling. That's the two. 
I'm telling you what, right here, these fans are getting treated to some of the best wrestling here. And you can find it right here in Pro Wrestling Union. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook and our YouTube page, which if you're watching this video now, you've already found us on YouTube. And right there, Christian Cross found his body on the mat there. And Elliot Russell goes in for that pin. But only a two count. I'm telling you Cole, what. This is, Cole, this is only the opening match of night two of, of Carnival Carnage. I mean, we have got, we Ooh. still have to come an, an explosive main event and several other matches. This is, this is an incredible card. Absolutely. And right here, you got Austin Jordan. He's back in the ring. Only a two count. And these I'll guys. Tell you what, this has been all Austin Jordan and the Heat Seekers from the opening minutes here. Well, they're doing the right thing here. They're doing frequent tag, staying on top of their opponent. I mean, this is just perfect tag team action. Big boot and a German suplex. One, one two. Be, that's going to be all you know. And I'm not exactly sure if uh, Christian kicked out of that or if Aiden had to help roll his brother over just to get the shoulders off the mat. But wait a minute, Sigmund. Oh, and hits him with a huge chop there. He's going to ask the fans if they want to see another one. And, of course, the fans here in Union, South Carolina, they definitely do. And, oh, one more across the chest for that particular cross brother. Shoots him in. Oh, but Sigma needs a big boot. This is like the first, the offensive, first offensive move from the cross brothers and Randy Wayne. And now Randy Wayne gets in the ring while Sigma is down and just going to town on him now. And now Sigmund's in the ring with the reigning and defending Pro Wrestling Union Heavyweight Champion, the Outlaw. Oh, and a chop across the chest. Randy Wayne had originally just hit him with that headbutt, but it looked like it did more damage to the Outlaw than it did Matt Sigmund, who's known for that flying oh. headbutt maneuver. And what's he going to do here? Lifts him up and drops him Sigmund. down with the back suplex. One, you're gonna cover the two. champion! Oh, the champion kicks out. Sigmund holding his own with the PWU champion right now. But could you imagine? Oh, wait a minute. He's got his fingers right in the eyes of Sigmund there. Oh, Ooh. and just rakes across the eyes there. But I was gonna say, imagine the feather in the cap for Sigmund to pin the heavyweight champion. That could actually put him in top uh, in, in line for a title uh, match later. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, what a victory that would be. What a statement that would be. You know, the, the Heat Seekers have been treating this match almost like a, uh, almost like a thesis statement of why they should be the tag team oh. champions. And up to this point, they had been proving it. But now the Outlaw just comes in and just, just instilling his will, inflicting his will all over this match. Right now, the Randy Wayne, he was distracting Elliot Russell, which ended up costing his partner Sigmund there. But now he's, that, in the, he's in the opposite that, corner there. There's that oh. elbow to the forehead that won him the match against Lodi last night. Yeah, well, there was something a little extra in that elbow pad, and we all know that. But right now, Sigmund is in the wrong side of the ring there. The outlaw stops him from getting over. And here comes Aiden. Now they're, oh. learning. now they're picking it up. Look at this. Look at this tag team wrestling. Crosses the legs there, and is applying that pressure right there onto the legs. Almost like an inverted STF there, and he's just pulling the face of Sigmund. It looks like he might be trying to trying to go and chicken wing those arms there. And he's got him hooked. Wait a minute, tags in his brother Christian. There you go, and the referee sees it in the corner and didn't make the tag look at this look at this look at the cross brothers responding and now making their claim for top tag team in pwu christian cross looks like he's trying to go for a half crab there but sigmund is fighting it off there so the he's only thing he needed leg. to do was just hold on and he tagged in the partner randy wayne there he's gonna drag him over to that bottom rope and just drops his weight right across the knee there. Sigmund's in trouble. Sigmund's in trouble. He's in the wrong corner. He's been there too long. Oh. 
and just knee drops, trapping that leg there. And Randy Wayne, what's he going to do? Looks like he's going in for an Indian Deathlock, and he's got it. And that's applying a lot of pressure into that knee there, and this is going to just tear away from that knee of Sigmund there, and you can see the pain just racked on his face there. But wait a minute, you see that Aiden was actually pulling on Randy Wayne's arm, applying a little bit more pressure, giving him that extra leverage there. Another tag, and Christian's back in the ring. After a very sloppy start, this team is starting to put it together. You see the Outlaw and the Cross Brothers are now making frequent tags. They're working in the knee. They, they're, they're, it, they had a rocky start, but they've really, really shown up in this match in a big, big way here in the last few minutes. Well, just as everything, the machine can always run smooth, but somewhere down the line, something breaks down. And the Cross Brothers and the heavyweight champion, Randy Wayne, they took advantage of it. Absolutely, and right now what might be breaking down is Sigmund's leg. Look at this, look at this constant barrage of pain. Uh -oh. oh, to the leg and the knee. Sigmund, he's extending that hand, but he's not close enough to his partners there. And Aiden One. Cross... Aiden Cross just keeping the man away from his partners because they know they've got the one man down. And they're going to do everything that it's going to take to keep him down and just apply more punishment. And, oh, and a wishbone! Oh, and a stiff kick from Aiden Cross. Looks like going for a pin, but only a two count there. And Sigmund, he's still trying to find his way to get back to his corner and tag in either Austin or his partner, Elliot Sigmund's in pain, and every time he has to exert energy, every time he has to work those hips to kick out of a pinning attempt, he's having to put more and more pressure on that leg. He's having to take less and less of his of his breath, of his of his energy, getting back to the ropes. He, you know, he's he's in a bad, bad way here, and it's just getting worse as the champion takes him apart. Right now team of Randy Wayne and the Cross Brothers, they're doing exactly what the Heat Seekers and Austin Jordan were doing at the very beginning. And that's uh, keeping those frequent tags and applying punishment onto the opponent. And Sigmund is down in that half crab position, but he's pulling up. He's pulling Aiden's leg there. Looks like he's going to try to trip him up there to Look take the pressure back. off. Look at him fighting back oh, into an ankle lock. And I tell you what, Sigmund is just a thinking man, a thinking man's wrestler. But right there, you had Aiden Cross that just kept kicking him in the back, and he's right back into that half crab. And the referee is checking him, Kylan Disney. But Sigmund gets over to the ropes, and the referee is going to have to break up this hold. He has a five count. And Aiden about took all of that five count. Oh, and a chop across the chest. Tries to shoot him off. Sigmund, but oh, but wait a minute. He had enough in him to get that drop kick. But you can tell that really did a lot more damage to the knee. How do you get that height on one leg like he's been? That was that was incredibly impressive. But he's got to get to the he's got to get to the corner. He's got to get to a tag. He's got to get out of the ring if they're gonna stand a chance of winning this matchup. And he does. Wait a minute. Both men are tagged in. You got Christian now in the ring. But Elliot Russell in the ring, and now he's just taking out all three men here. Come I tell up, you what, the man Elliot Russell is throwing bombs all over this ring. Yeah. He's got the Cross Brothers, and what's he gonna do? Meeting of hey. the minds. And right now, we're just seeing absolute carnage, which goes along with the name of the show, Carnival Carnage, right here at the fairgrounds. And Elliot Russell. Up on the shoulders. Oh! And drives him down. That's this could be, be it. One, two. two. The outlaw saves the match. And Austin Jordan just comes running in with that forearm shot. The Aiden Cross. He's got Austin Jordan. And now you got the Cross Brothers shooting them off. What? Kicks one up. What's he going to do here? Wait a minute. What's he going to be going for here? Netbreaker. Oh, oh my goodness! He hit Christian Cross with that net breaker who was holding on to Aiden that ended up driving his own brother's head down for that DDT. That's some inventive offense there. In 
incredible action here on night two of Carnival Carnage. Also, Jordan goes in for that vertical suplex. Wait a minute, Randy Wayne, what's he doing? Oh! And, he and hits him with that lariat. Out. This is broken down. The referee's lost all control of this one. Right here. Oh, my goodness. At this point, I'm not even sure who the legal man is at this point. Everything is just going bonkers here. I'm not but sure the referee knows. But wait a minute. Randy Wayne, he's now the legal man. And I believe Elliot Russell of the other team. Oh, oh the DDT. Is that it? Is that all? It's going to be it. One, One two, two, no. Never. Not yet. Elliot Russell kicks out, and the outlaw cannot believe it. Some of the best talent in the Carolinas is right here in Pro Wrestling U. And a lot of it is right there in that ring right now. Oh! And Randy Wayne with another harsh chest chop. Throws in Russell. Comes running in, but no! Elliot Russell moves, picks him up for the power slot. Wait a minute, wait a minute, this could be it! This could be it! Power slam competition! Wait a minute, Sick is going up! Is he gonna pin him? Two! Wait a minute! Oh no! Looks like Christian was trying to put was trying to help out his partner, but a miscalculation there. Austin Jordan is now the legal man, goes up for a frog splash! One! Jordan! Two! Three! Austin Jordan just pinned the Pro Wrestling Union Heavyweight Champion in order to win this opening six-man tag. That is a huge statement. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. The Heat Seekers and the A-game Austin Jordan, the victors in this six-man opening matchup. Well, there is no way, there is no way not to look at the Heat Seekers as the obvious front runners for the next Pro Wrestling Union World Tag Team titles. But the Trans South Wrestling Champion has just pinned the Pro Wrestling Union Heavyweight Champion in decisive fashion. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Austin George got the microphone. Union South Carolina! Let's get down on business. Last night, I have told the Trans South Heavyweight Championship. Randy, with your holding in your hand, the Pro Wrestling Union Heavyweight Championship is my destiny. Sir, I have an idea, cowboy. Look at me when I'm talking to you. In June, right here on these fairgrounds, how about the Trans South Championship and the Pro Wrestling Union Championship? Winner take all in the middle of this ring. How about this? I'm not asking you. I'm telling you. Hey, I'm going anywhere. Hey. You want to talk directly to me, I'm going to talk directly to you. Talk. I have said since I won this belt that by any means necessary, I will keep it. Well, I'm going to give you your due, Austin Jordan. You pinned me fair and square. You're a hell of a champion. You're a hell of a wrestler. I accept your challenge. June the 5th, title for title, and... If you win, I'll shake your hand in the middle of this ring. So, ladies and gentlemen, there you go. Title for title for the next show for Pro Wrestling Union. That's going to be exciting. Put the damn camera out of my face. Take the first step of becoming a serious professional wrestler. Join Team Fearless Training Academy with WCW alumni Lodi. Become the best wrestler you can be. Call 704-890-0877 or visit yourflexappeal.com for more information.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Full Wrestling Union Carnival Carnage. Our next match for this evening, you got locally hated Chris Ballo heading back to the ring to the fans' dismay. And once again, like he did in night one, he's just going up to the fans, jaw jacking, telling them what he honestly thinks of them. And right now, he's not doing himself any favors with the fans here in Union, South Carolina. Yeah, I mean, locally hated isn't even just a moniker for him. It's a way of life. He really gets his people riled up. Now, the question is, can he turn that into a winning record here in PWU? You know, he yeah, had a bad night. I... <laughs> it's, uh, it's not looking like it's starting super great tonight. Chris Mollo. Still jaw jacking a little bit here. He's actually booing the fans now, and now he's demanding for Matty G to announce him one more time. <laughs> oh, this is this is. Chris Vallo's arch enemy are the, are the crowds here in Pro Wrestling U. Well, here comes someone that we actually have a lot to talk about. James Johnson, after a stellar match against uh, Randy Wayne a couple of weeks ago, is back out here looking to, looking to kickstart another run. Possibly back to the top of pro wrestling. Union. James Johnson, the tie dye sunrise, the 2020 wrestler of the year for the Carolinas, and he's going to be taking on Chris Vallo. This should be a very interesting matchup here. You know, you have two completely different styles, but yet very similar in a lot of ways, meaning that both of these individuals love to hit hard, but. James Johnson, a little bit more of an unorthodox wrestler. Chris Vallo, you know, he's just, like I said, he hits hard, and he's all about that Smash Mouth style. To my right, from Charles and South Carolina. Should be a very interesting mix of styles here tonight on night two of Carnival Carnage here in Union, South Carolina. Fans here, they're telling Chris Vallo exactly what they think of him. Once again, Chris Vallo telling the announcer to announce him one more time. And once again, the reception does not change. Poor manager. But the fans of Union, South Carolina, they love some James Johnson. And right there, the love is shown right there. What's not to love? He's an incredible superstar. Absolutely. He's definitely fantastic to watch in the ring. You never know what he's going to pull out, but you can rest assured, whatever he does, it's going to excite. I've heard about you. Referee looking for, checking for weapons there in uh, James Johnson's hair. We've had, you know, last night we saw a, uh, a, a very dubious world title defense. And, and, and you know, gotta be, gotta be safe here in, in pro wrestling. You know, gotta check for those foreign objects. This follow is just, once again, just giving the business to the fans there. Not letting the referee do his job by checking him out. Follows a powerhouse, follows talented, but he gets so worked up with the fans, he can't keep himself focused on the entering action, and that that does come to haunt him uh, in down the stretch. I, you know, I wonder, I wonder if maybe uh, he needs somebody in this corner looking out for him. Well, right now you got the two men; they are locked up, and follow probably the most powerful of the two. But James Johnson reverses. You saw where he used his foot there to stop the momentum from Valo. But once again, now you got James Johnson 
He's twisting the arm of Valo right now. So far, pretty clean. What's he going to do here? Wait a minute. He's clapping Valo's hand, getting the fans excited for this matchup here. This is so embarrassing for Valo right now, and I'm sure he does not appreciate it. Valo out of his game here, too. No, nothing to do with that power when his joints are being manipulated like this. Oh, but wait a minute. Valo's got some of James Johnson's hair there. He's got a Johnson, full handful of it. Johnson was just trying to have a little bit of a good time here, but Valo is not having any of it right now. In fact, that probably infuriated him more than anything else. Right now, you got Valo with that solid headlock there. But wait a minute. Johnson able to reverse it? Pulls him around? Headlock himself? And takes him over. Nice and clean. He didn't get voted wrestler of the year for 2020 for the Carolinas for nothing. He is in that ring, one of the absolute best athletes we've got going today. And uh, he proves it every time he steps in that squared circle. Right now, Johnson, you can see right there, the wheels are turning how he's going to be able to reverse this. And you can see right there, turns the man over to kind of loosen the legs up a little bit. And now, he's right back on top. You know, he, he's so quick to think about these things uh, as far as, like, how to get from one step to the next to get back to having that advantage. And Valo right there is paying the price for it. But Valo gets over to the bottom rope there. Clean break from James Johnson. And he's allowing Chris Valo to get back up. James Johnson out here is, you know, just one of the best wrestlers in pro wrestling union. But you have to think, Cole, oh. that he's still, he's still, you got to think he's still thinking about his loss to Randy Wayne in his PWU Heavyweight Championship match. You got to think he's hoping to get back there one day to get another shot at that title. And it may only take a, you know, a win here and a win there to get right back into title contention. Well, it definitely takes wins, but right now we got these two. Wait a minute. A little bit of cross action Ooh. there. Oh, and a huge shoulder tackle from James Johnson. And Valo's not quick to get up. Oh, wait a minute. Johnson goes to the ropes. Tries to go up. Oh, oh, it drops him directly onto the coconuts from that advert inverted atomic drop there. Johnson What's he going to do so here? Oh, so surprising. Look at what an incredible knee shot. To oh, oh, oh. James Johnson could have came away with a victory there, but Chris Vallo managed to get himself to kick out of that. Could be going for a German suplex. No, but oh, just runs him into that turnbuckle. And oh, and a big boot from Chris Vallo. And the tide has definitely turned here for the tie-dye sunrise. But only a two count from Chris Vallo. When you've got power like Chris Vallo has, you are never out in the fight. You are always one big move away from right back into it. And now the tie-dye sunrise. The tie uh, blah, blah. And now the tie-dye sunrise is on the defensive. Boom! Huge clothesline into the turnbuckle there. Snapmare. And Vallo comes running in. Oh! With a sliding strike. One, two. Only a two count. And Chris Vallo is just sitting there having some words with the referee, telling him it was a three count. And clearly the fans here do not agree with Chris Vallo. Nice little forearm shot there. And once again, Vallo concentrating on talking to the fans here, but James Johnson answers back with a gut shot. Big back elbow. Looks like he was going to try to go for something here. No, but oh, and just dumps him on his head. Follows a powerhouse. Follows got him here. They were really close to that bottom rope. Way too close to the ropes for a three count there, Cole. I don't think he could have got enough leverage there. Otherwise, the referee would have had to break the count up there. Headbutt from Chris Vallow to James Johnson. Whips into the corner. Oh, and a back elbow there. 
James Johnson. Oh, and just kicks him right in the face. Straight big boot, but Valo stays on his feet. Tries to whip him off again. A reversal. What's going on here? Oh, and Johnson's down. Not exactly sure what happened there. But now you got Valo. You just give him a shot after shot there. And what's he going to do here? Just talking and... Oh! And how is Valo still on his feet after that huge right hand? Oh! The constant John jacking have once again left Valo fighting out from underneath. What a shot! A lariat from behind! And that could be it! One! Two! But only a two count! Oh my goodness, I cannot tell you how in the world that shot from James Johnson, that right hand that hit pitcher perfect, did not knock Chris Ballo out. James Johnson's going to have to do a little bit more to take out Ballo. Right now he's got him up in the fireman's carry. Shoves him off. What's he going to do? Ooh. Oh! Big boot to the corner. Beautiful corner kick. This is Ballo's moment here. He, and he got him. Can he put him away? Oh, that's got to be it. That has to be it, Michael. That's, that's got to be a one, two. That's it. No, James Johnson will not be denied tonight. How does James Johnson keep kicking out? How does James Johnson keep hanging in there? Something that I mentioned before, James Johnson has one of the biggest hearts in professional wrestling, and it's showing right now. Looks like Balo's going to be running in for something, but no, wait a minute. Rolls him over. Oh, and he's up the headshot, and that is his move. That's got to be it. One, two, and three. Got to 100. He's not getting up. And ladies and gentlemen, right here, your winner in this contest, the Tie-Dye Sunrise. James Johnson and look at him he keeps putting together wins like that he keeps fighting out from underneath like that he keeps getting up every time a big man knocks him down like that James Johnson's gonna be wearing pro wrestling union gold before too long here Cole absolutely the wrestling fans we still have more to come for night two of carnival carnage stick around for this word from our sponsor For memories that will last a lifetime, contact Erica Sousa with Little Bit Photography, 864-357-5012, or email ericasousa636 at gmail.com. Special show, it's special to my heart, 
and it's going to be special for the community here in Union, South Carolina, because it's dedicated to our dear friend that we lost last year, a friend to wrestling here in Union, South Carolina, Ray Bitt Barber. So we're going to have the Ray Bitt Barber Memorial Parade of Champions. We're going to have it right here in the fairgrounds, and we want everybody to come out, celebrate, and have a good time watching some great professional wrestling action. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that's enough out of me. Are you ready to see the next matchup of the evening? Thank you, Mary Jean. Thank you. The next match is scheduled for one fall. It is set for 25 minutes, and the winner will be the number one contenders to the Pro Wrestling Union Tag Team Championships. Tag team partner, and you're looking at the, the next PWU tag team champion. Daddy, Daddy, Patrick Scott. The camera looks real good. That's right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I am back over here at the commentary's desk. Michael Smallwood, right here. We're gonna have crowning of another number one contendership for the vacant Pro Wrestling Union Tag Team Championships. The influencers and the former tag team champions themselves all were no soul. The winners will face either the Heat Seekers or the mystery team that they'll be facing at Heroes to Legends Wrestling with Life's Challenges over in Silva, North Carolina. This is incredibly exciting. We've got some of the best tag teams in all the Carolinas and all the South competing in Pro Wrestling Union and to pick these teams uh, as the potential future Pro Wrestling Union Tag Team Champions is incredible. And, and, and look, right here we have the very first PWU Tag Team Champions, all worm, no soul. That's right, Joey Ford and Brady Collins. And, and I have to say this real quick. I have such a deep appreciation for Joey Ford. This was a kid when I was in the wrestling business. I saw him come up from being like a referee, uh, getting that train again there to becoming the professional wrestler that he is today. And his tag team partner, Brady Collins, no slouch himself, one of the best innovative high flyers here in the state of South Carolina. And look at that, right off of the top rope, flipping in. He has some of the best arsenal maneuvers, some of the most tricky things. It is just a delight to watch uh, that man, Brady Collins, pull off the maneuvers that he can. But they're going to have a big challenge tonight with Patty Daddy, Patrick Scott, and the millennial Chance Riser, known as the Influencers. And Michael, I'm nice. Michael, I'm not sure if you can notice right now, but Chance Reiser, he always carries that cell phone with him at all times. And you can see that he's got it stuffed right there in the trunks of his wrestling gear there. I'm surprised he's not out here with that usual Starbucks cup of coffee as well, either. <laughs> I did notice that cell phone, and I, I, you know, at a certain point, he's going to probably want to take it out of his tights, but I, I'm, I'm now wondering, like, well, is he coming to play later? Like, is he going to take some pictures mid-match? I mean, I don't... I don't know, when, when you're competing at this level for the PWU Tag Team Championships, you want to have all of your attention on your opponent in the ring. It's not necessarily time to be taking selfie. Well, I will say this about Chance Riser. It, he, yes, it is perplexing that he would do these sort of things, these type of antics during a wrestling match. Like, you see right there, he's checking his phone, checking for text messages and everything like that. 
but don't let it fool you because the moment that he's in there and he gets started, he is impossible to outdo in regards to being a solid professional wrestler. But right now, you see that Chance Riser and Brady Collins are going to be starting off for this tag team matchup. And right there, it looks like he's trying to get in the head of Joey Ford. And don't forget what's at stake here. One of these two tag teams is going to head to a head-to-head ma -head matchup between against either the inf uh, either the Heat Seekers or their mystery tag team opponents, and for an opportunity to win the vacant Pro Wrestling Union Tag Team Titles. This is this is uh, what what are what is effectively now a tournament and the, uh, these these semifinal matches here as we uh, as we head into crowning new champs. This is an incredibly important tag team matchup. Right now you got Chance Riser. Wait a minute, Brady Collins tripping the leg. And now he's got the headlock on Chance. Right now he's turning it around. He's got that hammer lock. Brady Collins rolling through, kips up, twisting the arm. Brady Collins out here in the ring, and he's got you can see where he's got the shoulders taped up and you know, it's, it's, it's really good to, oh. to make sure that he's in fighting shape, but it also puts a target on his back, on his shoulders specifically, for any opponent to work. Will that come into play in this match? It's too early to tell. Wait a minute now. Just Ooh. whips him into that middle turnbuckle there. Smashes up. Hooded Karana! And wait a minute. That flip. Chance Riser was expecting something else, but gets met with a drop kick here. Incredible. And this was the thing that I was talking about. Brady Collins, he's so innovative with his offense there. With the flips, the kicks, and everything that he does. And right now, he's got Riser. Oh, right into his own territory right here. You know, he's I gonna... brought the tape as a, as a potential Ooh. target, but if you don't stand still long enough for them to be a target, it's not a problem. Absolutely, and Joey Ford, oh, oh, it just hits that running knee. Joey right Ford out of the ring, right into your living room. And Joey Ford, he is such a strong striker, you know. And something else, I I don't think I've ever mentioned this before. Oh, wait a minute, and Chance Riser just pulls the hair and tags in Patty Daddy. And, and here he comes. By Chance Riser. Oh, oh, wait a minute. And just nails him with a drop kick low, right into the face there after that hip toss. But Joey Ford, you know, I want to talk about a little bit of his background. He was the kicker for his high school football team uh, for the Chester Cyclones. Oh, he also, oh and he also I played soccer. Oh, man. And Joey Ford goes for the pin there. Only a one count there. In fact, while during his time over the University of South Carolina, he tried to walk in on the football team to become the kicker there. But life had other plans after he got injured in professional wrestling and took time away. And, oh, and Patrick Scott hitting that Insiguri, almost knocking him out there. Very clever tag team wrestling from the influencers here. Very clever. You got to ground bit. these high flyers. They're fast. They keep moving. It's been very, very difficult to catch them. But you got to ground them if you're going to be able to impose your will on them. And that is exactly what the influencers are doing here now. Oh, and right into Chance Riser's foot there. And now Patrick Scott tagging in his partner. And just whips him right back in. Double hip toss. Pulls him through. What are they going to do here? And a double Ooh, back suplex. And stereo. That was just absolutely perfect from these two. Right now it's going to be hard to tell who's going to come out on top here. Because these teams are just so good. But Chance this Riser... Is still, this is still anybody's match. This is still anybody's ball game here. Chance Riser, he was just digging that foot right into the face of Joey Ford. And now backing him up into his corner there. And now you got both men just taking it to the worm himself. Patrick Scott, I'm not sure if I mentioned this before to you, Michael. But this was the man that was the other person that was in contention to becoming the first Pro Wrestling Union Heavyweight Champion. But of course, Randy Wayne was the one that won that matchup uh, back last year. 
And since then, the attitude has changed with Patrick Scott. He's become more aggressive, more vile, uh, not caring what the fans think of him. And then he partnered up with people like Chance Riser and has become one of the top stars here in the Carolinas. You know, you say that, Cole, and it sounds really familiar. I mean, you know, you look at, you, you lose a match for the PWU Heavyweight Championship to Randy Wayne. Watch attitude. Impossible not to not to mimic that, not to mimic that kind of success. And as you say, look, he's right here, Ooh. two matches away from the tag team titles. And could this be it? That was a beautiful drop kick from Patrick Scott there. And right now, Joey Ford is taking a lot of punishment there. But wait a minute, you know that the millennial is out there, and there he is. Just pulling his neck right across that bottom rope and giving him a few shots for good measure. And I think the referee, Kylan Disney, he may have saw that. Of course, Chance Riser's going to play it off like nothing happened whatsoever. And here's that aggression that was talked about from Patrick Scott. Look at that, toying with him. That could hurt the wrist, that could hurt the elbow, that could hurt the, the femur, like, like the entire forearm here. Like the, That could hurt every single part of that arm. Right now, it looks like he's just toying with Brady Collins at this point. And Patrick Scott. Oh, but wait a minute, Joey Ford. Looks like he was trying to amount some offense. And Patrick Scott. Not letting him do it. Oh, and a European uppercut. Almost stopped him dead in his tracks there. If it's a new attitude. Oh, Cole wait a minute. Certainly oh. working for him, but not anymore. A tidal wave kick just out of nowhere. And now both of these men are down. And at this point, it's whoever can get to their partner first. And it might make the difference in this tag team matchup. Both teams, both men need to make tags. Both men need to get their partners in the and influence. Chance Riser's in. Here comes all word, no soul. And there's Brady Collins. Answers with a clothesline. Answers with a kick. What's he going to do here? Suplex. No, wait a minute. Patrick Scott pulls his partner down. And stopped and him dead in his tracks. Reckless. Whips him off. Ducks the line. And hit some big one. That's it. Two. No. No. Chance Riser kicked out of it, but you can tell that took a lot out of them. And the Brady Collins. He... The influencers will not be denied. But Brady Collins, he's up on his feet. He's pulling Chance Riser back up. Maybe going for it one more time. The stakes oh, wait a minute, Patrick. No, wait a minute, Patrick Scott just pulled Joy Ford out of the ring. And Brady Collins, oh! oh! Incredible inverted kick. A chance riser. He is definitely out of it. But wait a no minute. What he is. Brady Collins. But wait a minute, chance riser. Hits him with a oh. German suplex. And Patrick Scott picks him up, almost deadlifting him. Into a Falcon, Falcon Arrow. Falcon Arrow for one. Is that, is that all? Two. No. No. How can it's, this be? How can this be, Michael? Because it's too important. It's because the PWU Tag Team Championships. Oh, and Joey right. Ford. Joey Ford picks him up, spins him out, and hits him with that blue thunder bomb. And Chance Riser picking him up. Driving the knee in. Ducks the line. And Pele kick. Oh my god. Bodies everywhere. Everything is going on. Everything is so exciting right now, Michael. But wait a minute. Patrick Scott pulled it all oh. out. And That's incredible. Tag team wrestling from the influencers. Picks him up on a Michinoku driver. And could this be it? One. Two. And no! Not enough. Not enough here. Who wants it more? Who wants... Who wants... Oh! 
But wait a minute, could this be the prelude to that pumpkin spice liver? Incredible clothesline, and that's got it to be all! Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. On June the 5th, whoever wins the Tag Team Championship over in Silva, North Carolina, the Influencers are your number one contenders going into the Ray Bit Barber Memorial Parade of Champions. The Influencers are now officially one match away from being the Pro Wrestling Union Tag Team Champions. Hashtag that. one contenders. That's the sound of us putting more gold around our waist. Heavier bags to check and luggage. Pro Wrestling Union, you've got new tag champs coming soon. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Carnival Carnage right here in Pro Wrestling Union. Cole McAbee back with you. Michael Smallwood had to step away for just a moment, but I'm going to be calling the action with you right here in this next event. Right here, you're seeing the very chiseled superstar from Texas, Peter Bilt. And the fans right here in Union, South Carolina. A little bit of mixed emotion there. Oh! Just like that little kid there, he thought he was going to get a high five from Peterbilt, but instead pulled the hand away and told him to sit down. The men here don't care much for him, but the ladies are going absolutely wild for this guy, and I can see why. He's a good-looking young man, he's got a great chiseled body, but tonight it's not about the physique, it's about what you can get accomplished in that ring, because tonight he definitely has a tough opponent coming his way. and some familiar music is playing. The fans from Union, South Carolina was hearing this before last night during the main event for the heavyweight championship of Pro Wrestling Union. And he is back one more time by popular demand. It is the sign guy. This is Rudy. And the fans here in Union, South Carolina, they are definitely going nuts for Lodi right now. It's just amazing to see somebody like Lodi come into the ring and just absolutely make the day of these fans here in Union, South Carolina. Going around with all the different signs there, and you can see where a fan from last night still has his sign right there in the crowd in the blue there. And even got a fan getting a photo op right there. Let's see what he's got coming up next. Kind of hard to see from our angle. But normally in some of the signs that Lodi has, he'll have some to cheer up the fans, and he's got some that shares the word of God. Lodi, a devout Christian, and also the operator of Team Fearless Wrestling Academy. And as I mentioned on a previous night, a tremendous individual inside of the ring and outside of the ring, and the fans here just absolutely love him. I can't say it enough. What's he going to do? Lodi rules. All right, and here comes Lodi. He's getting in the ring now.
and the fans here are still cheering very loud for this superstar. Once again, Peterville getting that mixed reaction from the crowd there. But there is no denying it. The fans here in Union, South Carolina, definitely behind the sign guy. For those of you that were here last night, you know I can't wrestle without giving away a sign, so here's what I do. Whoever makes the most noise gets to take a sign home. Who wants a sign? All right, here we go. As per tradition for Lodi, going around, see which corner of this room here is going to be making the most noise. And one of these lucky fans here gets to go home with a personalized sign made by Lodi himself. That fan right there has got one of them. Make some noise. And the fans here in Union, South Carolina are definitely doing that. There you go. Another lucky fan there. All right. Looks like that one's a Lodi's Rule sign. And Peterbilt as we were seeing just a moment ago, just kind of standing right there on the apron, not really getting the excitement that these fans have over a piece of cardboard with a little bit of writing on it, but the fans here, they don't mind it whatsoever. All right, looks like we're down to the last sign. And who's going to get it? There's another lucky young fan right there in the crowd. Seeing some familiar faces here in the crowd here in Union, South Carolina. Over there we had Brett Wilmington, ring announcer extraordinaire, Bob Keller, another famous figure here in the Carolina's wrestling scene. And Lodi there giving the business to the photographer for showing up late for this event. Close up. Don't adjust your TV. I tell you what, this Peterbilt is something else. It looks like he knows where the cameraman is at all times and just ready to pose for him. It's like he's smuggling raisins. I don't think they check. Well, Peterbilt was at one time a bodybuilder competitor. Won many championships and trophies because of his impressive physique. And that he definitely does have one. But Lodi himself is no slouch. He's in tremendous shape. And the referee calling for the bell. What's going on here? Okay, let me get it. Sorry about that, Lodi. All right, well, the match is now on the way. Wait a minute. What's Peterbilt doing? He's telling them to back up. What for? I mean, he's going at the hard cam and doing a pose down. I'm not, not exactly sure if Peterbilt is fully aware that a pose down is not necessarily part of professional wrestling. Looks like we're going to. Wait a minute. Tell him to stop one more time. And once again with the poses. Now I'm sure it excites all the women here in the seats inside the building, but these men that paid to get inside this building to see a wrestling match don't care anything for that. They want to see two men get into a fight. And Lodi, you can tell he's ready to fight. Boom, one more time. Only because... Come on, boy. 
And it looks like one more time, Peterbilt. And even the referee is getting frustrated over this. I mean, it is very impressive. He's got a tremendous build, but wait a minute. Lodi is right there behind him. Hits him with a huge hip toss. Pick him up. Body slam. And now Lodi just tosses him outside of the ring. And the fans here in Union, South Carolina, they definitely appreciate that a lot better than a whole bunch of poses from Peterbilt. Wait a minute, Lodi's going outside of the ring. He's not waiting for the man to come back in. Shot to the head. And his head just bounces off of that apron there. What's he going to do here? Oh, and right into the seat. The fans getting an up-close and personal look at the action that you can find right here in Pro Wrestling Union. But these men need to get back in the ring before the referee counts to 10. And here we go. Once again, the fans here in Union, South Carolina showing their support for Lodi. Oh, but Peterbilt just raised up that knee, caught him in the gut there. And now he's got him in the corner, giving him a few kicks right to the gut. Shoots him off. Wait a minute, a reversal by Lodi. Goes in for the schoolboy. One. Oh, two count. Lodi, wait a minute. What's he going to do? Vertical suplex and snaps it off. Wait a minute, one more. Lodi's calling for one more, and the fans here in Union, they're wanting it. And they got it. And once again, ladies and gentlemen, we want to thank the Union County Fairgrounds Board of Directors, Paul Winters, and the rest of the crew for allowing Pro Wrestling Union to come in for this great event here at the fairgrounds, being part of the attraction. But right now, Peterbilt, he's in a bad way right now against the veteran. Oh, and a chop across the chest. Lodi could be going for one more, maybe. Wait a minute, what's going on here? Oh! The referee didn't see it, but Peterbilt just poked Lodi right in the eye. Giving some temporary discomfort. And now Peterbilt tosses him. Oh! And drives the forearm right into the lower back could be looking for a weakness there and once again Peter Bill is focused on the cameraman and wanting to do some more poses can't get any more narcissistic than Peter Bill looks like Lodi he's trying to find a way to a corner to help himself back up there but Peter Bill is right there behind him Shoots him off, crashes into the turnbuckle, but Lodi gets the feet up. What's he going to do here? Hits him with a back elbow. Wait a minute, tried to go for that clothesline, but ducks it, but Peter Bill answers with one back. And whoops, flipping Lodi over, but only a two count. That was a sick looking clothesline. Right now, Lodi's in a bad way. Peterbilt driving the shoulders into the abs, knocking the wind out of him. And another hard shoulder thrust. Now he's got him hoisted up on his shoulder there. What's he going to do? And squats Lodi, showing how powerful he is. It just drives him right into the turnbuckles again. And only
only a two count from Peterbilt. I know I've been talking a lot about his physique, but you also tend to forget just how powerful the man is. You know, it's one thing to look good, but, whoa, wait a minute, just did a backflip and landed on his feet. Such athleticism from Peterbilt and then drops the elbow, but only a two count. But like I was trying to say, there's a lot of people that have a good physique that are not necessarily as strong as they look, but Peterbilt is definitely strong, if not stronger, than he looks. We're getting a good shot here. The fans here in Union, South Carolina, they're still cheering on Lodi, wanting him to come back. Peter shoots him off. Nails him with that another clothesline right in the corner this time. And another one. No, he misses. Lodi was able to duck out of the way. Looked like it did a little bit of damage there to Peterbilt. A shot to the gut by Lodi. Another shot to the gut. Maybe finding his second win here. Whips him to the ropes. Hits him with a nice clothesline. Followed up. Big back elbow. Looks like he's going to work with those jabs there. Winds it up. And hits him with the elbow. Kick. Wait a minute. Going for the perfect fisherman suplex. One, two, and three. So close. So close. That had to be two and three quarters so close. It was an absolutely perfect suplex by Lodi, but not enough to put away Peterbilt. Kick to the gut. Looks like he could be going for the DDT, but no. Peterbilt just drives him into the corner, buying him some time there. He whips him to the ropes, picks him up, and a spine buster, and this could be it, too. But only a two count. And you can see the frustration right there on Peter's face. Perhaps he's going to have to try to put him away with that huge power slam that he likes to use. Drop toe hold, floats over. Looks like he may be going for a Rings of Saturn there. And that's exactly what he's doing. A little bit more of a homage to the Ravens flock. But wait a minute. Lodi pulled it over. Trying to pin Peterbilt. One. Two. That was a good counter from Lodi. Trying to take that Rings of Saturn and turn it into a pinning predicament. But Peterbilt kicks him to the gut. Picks him up. Uh-oh. Looks like he could be going for that power slam. But no. Lodi's out of it. Kick to the gut. Flow DDT, and that's got to be it. One, two, and three. And just like that, ladies and gentlemen, WCW alumni Lodi is the winner of this contest, putting away Peterbilt with that perfect DDT. And the fans here in Union, South Carolina, they're just eating it up. Yeah. And even in defeat, Peter Bilt tries to pose for the cameraman, but to no avail. Media, the official producers of all Pro Wrestling Union video content. Find them on Facebook and find out how they can help produce your next event. Ladies and gentlemen, here we are at the main event of night two of Carnival Carnage. Right now, you got the All-American Blue Chipper, Chase Emery, being led to the ring by his manager, the G, G. Frederick Vandiford, now wearing a suit 
wearing sunglasses, no longer having a mustache, looking a lot sharper than he did the other night with that ridiculous vest. Yeah, I mean, he looks, he looks, a, lot, he looks a lot better here tonight. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a bigger night's main event time. And, uh, you know, Chase Emery's been heading towards the main event since he paired up with the G, and maybe it's starting to pay off. Well, he's definitely got a big challenge for tonight because last night at night one, the challenge was laid out. Atop. The challenge was laid out by one of Union County's finest, the Black Cat Dion Johnson in this grudge match. And the fans for Union South Carolina, they cannot wait for their hometown hero to hit the ring. This might be the single greatest challenge that Chase Emery has had since he paired up with the G. We're going to see if the G's guidance has uh, really given Chase Emery the tools to be a multi-time champion. Or if maybe it's all gone to his head because this man is not going to go down easy. Definitely not. And the fans here in Union, South Carolina have come unglued here. Cheering on Dion Johnson, straight out of Chambertown himself. Tick Green's baby boy, Dion Johnson. And right now, he's just posing for the fans. He's posing for the camera lady over here. And he's getting ready for this matchup against the All-American Blue Chipper, Chase Emery. They do love their hometown hero here, don't they? Absolutely. Deion Johnson is one of my favorite people in professional wrestling. He and I have been friends for such a long time. But right now, he's staring across the ring from that man right there, Chase Emery and Derek Vanderford. And Chase Emery returning the stare. You see it. You see it in the eye. Oh, wait a minute. Here we okay, go. Just, here we go. And attacking him. He's going to try to whip him to the ropes, maybe. But no, Deion reverses. Place him up way up in the air. Turn the the lights and down. He's Beautiful back body be. drop. Brilliant strategy to powder out after that incredible back drop. And you can see it right there on Derek Vanderford's face. He is not happy by that. But he's over there consoling his champion, Chase Emery. Coming out of his right. sunglasses he is. But the fans of Union South Carolina, they are digging this. They are loving this already. One huge move into the match. And these fans are absolutely loving it. And I'm loving it. This is such an exciting night right here to end night two of Carnival Carnage. First moment of our big grudge match main event here. And, you know, Chase Emery coming out here, he has been simply manhandled right in the opening seconds of this match. Chase Emery, he was trying to go in, attacking Dion, and it just did not pan out for him. And Chase yeah. Emery, he's a little hesitant getting back in that ring. It wasn't a bad strategy. In. Cole, it wasn't a bad strategy. He needed to come in and start this match hot. He needed to start ahead. Now, it's you know a lot can be said about the power, the strength, the experience, the skill of Black Cat Dion Johnson, so it obviously didn't. But Chase Emery's logic was sound there. Right now, the only thing that's sound is him holding that back. He's making it very evident that he's hurt. And Deion Johnson, he's just waiting for this young buck to strike. These two staring each other down. Tie up. And what's going to happen here? And Deion Johnson just Look shoves him back. Look at this. Chase Emery not used to being overpowered in that ring. And you can see on his face, he's getting frustrated. He's getting emotional. And we said this last night. The G is usually out there to be the emotional one. So that Chase Emery can keep a stone cold glare and keep his mind focused on the in-ring action. But Deion Johnson's in his head. Right now, these two are locked up again. Neither man wanting to give an inch here. Let's see who's going to get the upper hand in this particular tie-up. Oh, Chase Emery hits him with the knee to the gut. Shoots him off. Throws the line, but wait a minute, Ducks. Jab, jab, jab. And he's going to do what now? Tags him with the big elbow. And Chase Emery, he's out of there one more time. Right into the arms of Derek Vandiver. Derek's going to have to change strategies. He's going to have to give Chase something to do because this 
is a one-sided lesson from oh, wait a, a local legend. And Deion Johnson getting up on that top rope, and Derek Vanderford giving him that stare. And Deion's telling him to come get him some if he wants it. And you can see the look right there on Chase Emery's face. He's got to figure out what he's got to do to get Deion Johnson off his game. The team might want to change back into the vest. He seemed to be giving better advice last night than he is tonight. Please, please, no, do not change back into that vest. I hope somebody picked it up and threw it in the garbage. But now, Chase Emery is back in the ring. And it looks like he's taking a little bit more time here with Dion. Another lockup, maybe. Oh, but Chase Emery kicks him in the gut. Forearm shot across the back. Now this looks like Chase Emery. This looks like the young blue chipper we've seen absolutely tearing through the PWU ranks. Well, what he had to do was get Dion down, and oh, and now he's dropping that elbow right into the inside of that leg there and drops it again. That'll bring us out of the G. Dion Johnson wasn't expecting this so early. And right now, this is probably a smart strategy from Chase Emery. But wait a minute, goes in for a pin. One. Only a one count there. I think Chase Emery's plan at this point is just basically just do whatever he can to just take the fight to Dion and try to get the quickest win possible. And right keep now, him on the ground. Keep him off. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Dion. Oh, look at this. Dion being attacked by Derek Vandenford. And oh, it just paintbrushed him across the face there. Wow. Bold decisions by the G, but getting involved, trying to protect his investment, trying to use his own hands to do it. And one and two, but only a two count there. And just think, it was only a matter of last year that the friendship between Dion Johnson and Derek Vanderford fell apart because. Derek Vanderford turned his back on Dion, turned his back on the fans of Union County to side with somebody like Derek Driver to get that Trans South Heavyweight Championship last year when he screwed over Cauliflower Chase Brown at the last Trans South Wrestling event that was held at the old movie theater. But right now, you have Chase Emery right here on top pulling that neck back on Look Dion at the angle. Johnson. Look at the angle of that spine and that neck. That's not how a human back is supposed to bend. Absolutely not. And Derek Vanderford is getting a good view of this. And the fans here, as you can see, they're trying to get right behind Deion Johnson, giving him a little extra something to come off of. And Deion's back on his feet, hits the elbow, another elbow. Hits the ropes. Ooh. Ooh. Got nailed. Ooh. By a devastating back elbow. And Deion Johnson definitely felt all of that. And boom. Drops the elbow again. One, two. You can see it. Deion Dion Johnson. Johnson. He's making that kick out, but you can see it in his eyes. He wasn't expecting this kid to throw an elbow like that. And I know Deion Johnson talks about him being being in this game for such a long time and he keeps telling people he doesn't know how many more matches he has in himself but right now things are not looking too good for Dion who started this match out on fire it's up to Chase Emery this will be his last match right here tonight shoots the half two and with authority Dion kicking out throwing Chase Emery is not a small frame and Dion is throwing him across the ring with each of those kickouts. Right there, you can just see the pain on Dion's face. Chase Emery oh, and smashes the head up against the turnbuckle. Oh, and drives the L drives the shoulder directly into the lower back there and does it again. And one more time for good measure. And the referee is telling him he's got a five count to get the man out of the corner there. And Chase Emery kicking away at him. 
Oh, wait a minute. Disrespecting Deion Johnson. Kids wait a minute now. Kids getting emotional. But wait a minute. Deion Johnson, he's taking those shots, eating them. And still, wait a minute. The shirt comes off. Oh, no. Deion Johnson firing back. Shot after shot after shot. Goes into the turnbuckle. Oh, my goodness. Oh. The back fist. The back fist. Oh, my goodness. It knocked him right, almost right out of his boots there. Oh, oh no. The strap came down. Emery's it's out on his feet. time to get serious. Emery's out on his feet. One. Two shots. Oh, and he's teetering. He's teetering, but he didn't go down. What's Dion going to do? Goes in. Throws him right into the turnbuckle. He could be going for that butt bump there that he's going for finishing off his opponents. Taking a little bit of time there, but wait a minute. Oh, no. Taking too long. Oh, no. He just pulled in. Kylan Disney, our referee for this matchup. Oh, but Dion hits the bump. But wait a minute. Wait a minute. Who What's is this? Now? What's this now? Wait a minute. Who is this in the ring? This is a big man. Who the hell is this? Oh, my goodness. Oh. I don't know who he is, but he just laid out Dion Johnson. What in the hell is going on? Who is this man? Who is this man that just took out the black cat? Michael Smallwood, I'm sorry. I, I have got to get some answers on this. I've got to go. Uh, okay, well, look, Cole's left me here in the, the booth. Uh, uh, wait, two, wait, we've got a count here. And that's it. Chase Emery has just pinned multi-time, multi-time wrestling champion Dion Johnson has just beaten by Chase Emery. But we, we need to get answers here. I mean... Who, who was that that helped him? What, does, is, does, is the G in on this? Does Chase Emery even know what happened? This is a monumental finale to our two nights here at Carnival, Car Carnival Carnage. And look at this, they're shaking hands!
I just paid you one, two, three. Come on. And two. Antonio Ward. The hottest thing in professional wrestling today. You want to come to my town. Oh, he don't want to. He did. And try to make a name for yourself. He did. On Deion Johnson's back. Deion Johnson, no name. Well, Antonio Ward, you better be better than Chase Evans. Yeah. In June, we coming right back here. I'll do it again. Right? I'll do it again. We'll do it again. We're going to do a tribute show with my best friend who I lost last year, Ray Big Barber. Right. I want you to be here as well. Well, we'll be. We'll be here. So, Vern Troyer. That'll happen again. Vern Troyer. Same thing will happen again. I want you to go in the house, go back there in that back room, and dig out your boots and your tights, baby. Because I want you in the ring as well.
room full of idiots tell you what to do. That's crazy. This is crazy. Say something, Cole. Come on. Oh, God. With this again, not this again. The cause of that deafening in response. I am the one to grant it. 